All right, class, today I'm making a video on 2D kinematics. It's actually 5.30 in the morning, um, October 25th, 2013. And the reason why I'm doing a 2D kinematic question is it was a bit of projectile vomit that I had to deal with with my daughter, uh, Avery. She had an upset stomach, apparently, and decided, Daddy, you need to make a video on kinematics. If you look across here real quick, you will see the cat clock. It's like my Ziggy cat. And here's my Ziggy cat. And this is all at 5.30 in the morning. When you're looking at two-dimensional kinematics, one of the key parts to remember is if you have an object that's falling straight down or you have an object that is pushed horizontally but will obviously start falling straight down. They will both hit the ground at the same time. Okay, there's a neat YouTube video um, from Mythbusters that show a bullet shooting out of a gun, and then you see the same bullet falling straight down, and it literally hits the ground at the same time, even though the bullet went a few hundred feet across. Okay, so you're going to use the time for the Y and the X. Alright, one of the main concepts you'll see in 2D kinematics is knowing where your acceleration and your velocities are in each direction. So since we're looking at two dimensions, we have an X axis and then we have a Y axis, right? Let's say I have a block here and it gets pushed at a certain initial velocity off the cliff. When it's moving in the x direction, there is gravity only facing downward. So since the gravity is only facing downward, the x direction will not change. Okay, very key point. Your x direction speed will not change. It's going to stay the same throughout because again there's no net force on it. So vx will be constant. Now the speed in the y direction obviously will change as it's getting further and further um, down the hill. The other constant will be gravity, and that's obviously in our y direction. Our acceleration due to gravity, make sure you use negative, because it's going down, negative 9.8 meters per second squared. In most of these cases, you want to figure out the time it takes to hit the ground. If I give you the height, you could easily find the time using the kinematic equation. It would be y equals one half at squared, because there's no initial velocity before it hits the ground in the y direction. And once you know your time, you usually could figure it out the um, x um, distance that it goes. Here's a useful kinematics graphic organizer with the x and the y direction. You should definitely write this one down in your notebooks. Um, this is using picture kung fu with your x and your y. So I wrote my velocity and my x. I have my distance and it might go horizontally and my time. I also have my velocity in the y direction. and That's our initial, our acceleration due to gravity, our height of the hill or ramp, and our time also. Now some things that will almost always work are the times will obviously have to be the same in the X and the Y. So if you can find the time in the Y first in most cases, then you just simply put it into the X. Also again, your acceleration due to gravity is almost always negative 9.8 meters per second. Let's look at a sample problem using 2D kinematics. A gazelle is seen running at 60 meters per second at the top of a 30 meter high cliff. If he runs straight off the cliff, how far away from the base of the cliff should a soft mattress be placed so that the gazelle doesn't injure himself? Now first you want to draw a picture and definitely separate information into X and Y. So here's a picture of your gazelle running 60 meters per second to the right. The height is 30 meters going down. And we're looking for where to place your mattress. We know that our initial speed in the y direction is zero because he's not jumping off, he's just falling off. 
our acceleration is negative 9.8, and the distance that he travels is negative 30 because it goes downward. Now your Vx is always going to be 60 meters per second. We're looking for the x. That is our unknown in the Kung Fu equation. Okay, the first thing you want to do in this one is figure out how long the gazelle is in the air. If I could figure out how long the gazelle is in the air, and I know the speed of the gazelle and that doesn't change, I could just do the velocity's distance over time to find my distance. But first, we've got to find the time. There is an acceleration in the y direction, so you can use any kinematic equation. And y equals vot plus 1 half at squared is usually the easy one to work with because you have no initial velocity. So you have negative 30 for your y equals 1 half negative 9.8 t squared. When you solve for t, you get 2.47 seconds. You just do 30 divided by 4.9 and do the square root of it. Okay, again, once you have your time, 2.47 seconds, obviously the time is the same on the x and y direction, so you can place it here. Then just use your equation for speed. Vx is equal to the distance over the time. I have 60 meters per second for my speed, 2.47 seconds for my time. When you multiply that, you get 148.5 meters. So that's our answer in terms of where you want to place your mattress. So again, as a review, you find your time first from the y component. Use that time in the x to solve our distance. Now, what if we added um, an extra part of this question with what velocity would the gazelle hit the soft mattress? Let's say we have to make sure we get the right mattress to make sure he's comfy in there. If he falls too fast, we might need a better mattress for it. For this, you want to provide the velocity it hits and the angle. The angle will matter too in terms of maybe where you want to place your mattress. So you want to draw a vector triangle and solve for the final y velocity. Okay. We know our x is 60 because that's constant. To find our y velocity, we could use a kinematic equation. To find a velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus acceleration times time. In order to do that, you get 24.2 meters per second. Now, obviously, if the height was higher and the gazelle landed from a higher place, it's going to have a bigger y velocity, and that'll change your final velocity which actually makes sense because the higher up you are, the more acceleration due to gravity is working on you to make you go faster. Okay, once you know your x and y components of your velocity, you can just use a Pythagorean theorem to solve for it. So again, I have 60 going to in the x direction. I have 24.2 on the y direction. You just do a squared plus b squared equals c squared to find your velocity and you get 64.7 meters per second there. In order to find the angle at which it hits, it'll be this angle here. You could use sine, cosine, or tangent at this point. Um, if you use tangent, just do the opposite, 24.2, divided by the adjacent, which is 60, to find your angle. Make sure you do it in degrees on your calculator. Any other questions, please feel free to send me an email at kaminskyl at heycisd.net.